Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the most epic PlayStation 2 Portable Mini that you can buy in 2021. And yeah, I'm using maybe the best PlayStation 2 Portable you can get. But the thing is like, now we're having something seriously. Like this thing is freaking badass. And when you, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with all the older models I've reviewed, the other things like having these kind of beefcake devices. But you need to take consideration, first of all, this thing has been made by hand. So there is no like a big manufacturer making these things. And they are basically using original parts when it comes to the mainboard. So this is absolutely not emulation. This is on real places to slapped into this tiny case. So what you're going to get is not a lot. We're going to get a portable device and of course we're going to get ourselves the power adapter for charging it. Because with this device it works with different kind of batteries so we're also going to need a special battery charger for that. This is the AC DC adapter and here you can see like it has a different voltage 8.4 volts and in total 25.2 watts. And this is like something different because the <laughs> you don't get this every single day but the reason i already said like they're using special batteries for making these portable devices but later on i will show you which one those are okay so let's take a close look at the device itself and how comfortable it is but first of all i already want to point out so, so what i understand of this device has been made from an original playstation 2 slim edition yeah of course the fatty is a little bit too big i don't know if they can even make it the portable like like a portable like this machine from the fat but i think not because of course the playstation 2 is already very slim it's very slim and they make it more slimmer yes okay so at the front we're going to get just the normal controls like an original controller only there are slightly some differences so to begin with we're going to get two joysticks and the joysticks are similar to the nintendo switch it also comes with the clicks that we're going to need then of course we're going to get the cross square and the original buttons. There is only one thing I want to show you that I didn't like. The touch itself is quite okay and it feels very nice. In the middle we're going to get select start and then we're going to get the d-pad. So the d-pad itself, it looks kind of cheap, like it feels also very cheap. And I mean like the way how it floats. But I can tell you like when playing with it, it works perfectly. I don't have the issue that I had with the previous one. And at the front we're going to get two stereo speakers. Those sound Okay, so in the middle we are going to get three tiny 3D printed, tiny, really tiny, 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 tiny buttons. And these buttons are for the volume control and in the middle we're going to get one for getting into the menu. Alright, so let's do a quick overview of it. And at the back we're going to get the plug for charging it. This is the basically the second on and off switch. Yeah, that's kind of weird because you need to turn it on over here and then you need to press the button to boot up the system itself. This device comes with a CF card, so we don't have a USB like with the previous models. Then we're going to get four 3D printed shoulder buttons. And I'm going to say when you're holding it, you can touch them okay. It's not the best configuration, but it works. It works better than most of these portable devices. So that's basically like what you're going to get with this device. There is no AV out or something like that. It's purely made for portable gaming. And not to forget, of course, what we can do is plug in a headphone. That is an option you don't have with every portable device. Okay, so let's boot it up. The first thing we need to do is putting the switch here at the left. You can see the LED is started to blink. It also indicates the color, like how far the batteries are empty. Then we're going to press the button and pop. And it will boot up the system. It takes a couple of seconds to boot up McFree Booth in combination with OPL. And we can play the games from the CF card. So at the back we're going to get ourselves a more like a special roaster for against dust in combination with the fan for cooling the system and I will let you hear it how loud it is. In my opinion it's loud but not really annoying loud. All right so when you're booting up a game and it's basically like getting a new signal sometimes I had the issue that I cannot get into the menu of the display but here you can see like when you're going to get in the menu here you can change the brightness language you can always like basically put the display in different position if you're having some issues and fun fact you can put it in the original 4 by 3 expert ratio if you want to okay and of course here you can like mute it on off and we can change out the volume but we can also do it outside of the menu when you're going basically pressing the buttons like plus or minus 
But if you want to play your old school games, you make an ISO file of it, or the format that you need for booting it up, take consideration that you need to have some tinkering when it comes to OPL in general, because not all the games have like 100% compatibility, and you can fix most of these issues when you're changing out the options. But it's something I can make a separate tutorial about how you need to set everything up. But it's something you need to take consideration when it comes to OPL. It's not really like a plug and play device that you slap on your files and you can play a game. Some games will boot up just perfectly, but some games will have some issues in the end. So he is using a very nice display, an IPS display. So when it comes to the colors and even the view angle, which you can see over here, it looks amazing. I personally really love it. So that is a very big positive thing. The only thing I didn't like is more like the bezel. And what do I mean with the bezel? So when you're looking very closely, you can see like the silver edge of the display itself. That is something like they need to fix. If this edge or this piece of metal was black, it would be like not really noticeable. And that is the thing that I find a little bit a bummer in my opinion. Maybe I'm nitpicking about this, but you're paying a lot of money for this device. Okay, so but how is the overall performance and the, how comfortable is this device? So what I'm noticing with this handheld, it has a very weird looking D-pad that looks cheap, but here you can see it responds like just fine. And that was the first thing that I was very pleased with because with my previous models, I will show you later on, I had so many freaking issues. Another thing that I really love about this, so with using a CF card or normally USB, you have like significant faster loaded time sometimes with some of the games, depending again how the compatibility is. But then overall, it's a really cool way to play this way. Okay, but let's first do a quick gameplay. Just how is the overall experience? So the D-pad plays very nice. And also the analog stick is positioned very comfortable. And I was quite surprised to be honest. The only thing is like the shoulder buttons need to basically like cramp up my hand like this to press it because like the micro switches you need to really press them hard. You can already hear like the audio itself is quite good. So when you crank it up, you go around 70 75%. You can hear like this crackling noise. So mostly I leave it like on 50%. But such a great experience playing these old school games. I'm bumping against everything because I was looking at my camera screen and not the game itself. Mm -hmm, really convenient. But this is something for you. That is of course something you need to decide because it's a very expensive handheld to get. And yeah, so far I don't understand like emulation when I'm making this video is not very common, especially when it comes to Android devices. So still the place to portable is a really cool way and it's official hardware. But I'm gonna say that I'm still very pleased when it comes to the D-pad and the analog stick. I just need to point it out again. But let's take a close look at the paint job because here we're going to get a significant improvement when you're looking at all the other models I've reviewed here on the channel. So you cannot really compare this with, let's say, a product they made like a lot of different versions of them, of like gazillion editions when it comes to, let's say, an Embernic. But still, for a hand paint job, I think it's very, very nice. When you're looking closely and you're getting a good camera, like what I'm using now, yeah, of course you will see like minor and like minor problems with the paint in general. That's something we always will have with custom devices like these. But when you're looking at closely, Still there, like, I don't understand, I think there were like 3D printed cases that they're repainting. So the surface they need to paint are like, like really smooth, like from a mold. And so do correct me if I'm wrong, but that is what I understand of it. Like of course, when you're looking at the screw over here, you can see like there is some paint chip over there. But that's like the most horrible thing I can find on this. So you can see that sometimes when you're finding the right creator, you're going to get a way better paint job and better value for your money in general. Okay, but how heavy is the device itself? So let's give it a look at this. And in total, 440 grams, and that is not a lot, especially if you think like most handhelds weigh the same amount when you're looking like Embernic. But let's take a close look at the PlayStation 2, the seven inch model. Here you can see this thing weighs 741 grams. So that is getting really beef cake. And then of course we're having like the gigantic eight inch edition. And this one even weighs 821 grams. So you can see like this mini version weighs almost, I would say nothing, but compared when you're looking at other devices I've reviewed from China, this thing has a very nice weight to it. And you can feel it in your hands. And for long term, yeah, you're still going to get slightly beefcake, but it will take long. 
Okay, so how about the other ones? I just want to do a quick comparison and just talk about the other portables I've reviewed here on the channel. But if you want to see a full review, you need to check the different video. But already you can see like this device, like the new PlayStation 2 Mini Portable is super small and it's just mini compared with the other ones. But this is just a quick overview of like what other models look like. So this is the 8 inch version. It's a completely different format when it comes to the display. Pretty damn awesome. It's like a gigantic beast of a PlayStation 2 Portable, but it is not really portable anymore. So this was the other version I've reviewed this year. The Black Edition, like the revision of the old one I've reviewed from back in 2020. And then we're having like the mini version. And I'm just going to be honest, I'm completely in love with this thing. But okay, so how comfortable is the device compared with other PlayStation 2 models? So let's start with the 7 inch version. So this thing is quite heavy already showing you with the weight. And I must say this thing was okay. It was comfortable. Beside that it is, was quite heavy. And the analog sticks, everything works very well. And if you want to play some fighting or shooting, it was just okay. And I was quite pleased with this. But when you're going to take a close look at this, like this gigantic beast, like this thing was so non like it was not comfortable at all because it's too big for my hands i barely can reach the shoulder buttons so when everything is like not perfectly placed and when i was holding this mini version i was so happy just that they managed to get it in this tiny really tiny cabinet or shell because when you're looking at this it looks really nice and even this thing has some different height in the shoulder buttons i'm gonna say that I would say it's not perfect at all, but this plays very nice. And I did play it actually for a couple of hours before even making this video, of course. But the thing, like, I really enjoyed it this time. Then the other ones that, like, like hurting my hands a lot. But in the end of the video, I will leave all of the links to the videos where you can see the comparisons and the differences between all of these handhelds. But in the end, when you're looking at the new PlayStation Mini version portable, you can see like they did an amazing job. So next up, let's do a quick teardown just to see what they were going to get in the inside. All right, so next up, let's do a quick teardown. So with this device, the teardown will be slightly different because the way how they assemble this is slightly different. Yeah, I wanna say slightly, it's completely different. So I've reviewed like seven inch and the eight inch model of the PlayStation 2. And most of these things are like, like basically the teardown was quite easy. Like it was easy peasy, removing a couple of screws and you can just lift up the top shell or the bottom shell, depending how you want to disassemble it. And you're just ready to go. But with this one, it is quite interesting because this thing basically exists of three different parts when it comes to the shell itself. All right, so let's remove the first part. And yep, you can really see that the buttons are falling out, like the 3D printed buttons. It's not a big of a deal. But basically when you're putting the shells together, it basically does the only thing that holds the button in place. Okay, so the next thing are the batteries. Ooh, man, that is not good. So I'm going to use my own some kind of gummies to put everything in position because yeah, it's just like having not enough glue over here and there to put it in position. So. That is not a good thing. Mm -mm. That is quite naughty, if you ask me. But when you look at this thing, like how tiny this PlayStation 2 portable is. And I mean like also the mainboard. Look at it, how they cut it in pieces to get to fit it in. Just squeeze it inside of this tiny shell. The soldering is not bad at all. Like they did some modification over there with a the memory card. You can see it at the left there. Like... They added some extra wires, no idea like why they did that. But overall, quite interesting. So let's do a quick teardown of the other part because I wanted to see everything. I just wanted to show you what you're going to get in the inside. The disassembly is exactly the same with the previous models. And I mean like the only thing you need to do is remove a couple of parkers on the side. And that's the only thing that we need to do. All right, so this is going to be exciting. Oh boy, oh boy, there's not a lot of room here. So like this thing that I'm always so afraid of that I'm going to rip a cable from the soldering point, but they also use some hot glue, so that will not happen that fast and that easily. But here you can see what you're going to get in the inside when it comes to the controller board for the display. And they also use a special encoder board when it comes to the control unit for the controls at the front.
Now we're going to get a better look at the main board itself. And they needed a lot of doing a lot of soldering with a lot of different cables this time. I see that they did a lot, a lot of improvise. And what do we mean with improvising? Is like with normal the modification, you get these PCBs you can basically like solder onto the main board. But you can see like they need to do a lot of soldering extra, getting some wires to the other parts of the shell. So when it comes to the soldering method and everything that comes with making a device like this, it's quite interesting. A better set that's quite impressive. Like did they do a lot of doing soft modeling, a lot of disassembly. The main board is just loose inside of the casing, but it doesn't make. I don't know what happened over there, but maybe it was a mod chip installed before they used this main board and they just basically cut it off like that. Not a big of a deal. But overall, it's a kind of a cable nightmare if you look at it, but I think that is something that is inevitable. Because simply when you're looking at this, like look at it, how many soldering points you need to like make for getting this freaking thing to work inside a portable device. Still, even, they didn't use a lot of hot glue in it. And I kind of do a better job myself. So the weird thing is when you're looking back at the memory card, you can see over there like they didn't even use all the soldering points. From that point on, they basically like use extra wires to solder straight into the main board. It's kind of weird. I have some issue with out of focus, but I just wanted to show you. That's kind of strange. Don't know why, but nevertheless, let's go on. Okay, so if you are a big fan of PlayStation 2 and you want to have something unique, I think there is nothing. Some, there is nothing else like this. Like this is the most epic thing you can buy when it comes to PlayStation 2 portables. So at this moment in this year when I'm making this video, I think this is the best thing you can get. It's flawed. It's like not perfect. So when you're looking at some things, like for example the buttons, you can see this thing is slightly crooked. Stuff like that because it's like made by a person itself. This is like something they slapped out of a manufacturer factory like a gazillion of these things. It is very unique and handmade. So when you're looking at the inside, I think that it looks very nice, even for a handmade device. Yeah, there are some pros and cons to this. So holding it for a very long time, I think it's not like really heavy or too heavy for playing for a long time compared with the other ones I've reviewed. And I think it's a really cool piece of technology. Let me know what you think of this. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family, and I will see you in the next video.